good morning students so in earlier class uh, we seen how the design is going to perform for the connecting rod so i see engine connecting rod so in today's class so let us see so the design of connecting rod uh, by using an uh, example problem so here uh, we mentioned i mentioned uh, a data so we need to design a connecting rod for a given uh, uh, data so let us write the given data for uh, doing the design of connecting rod so here uh, so it is a developing uh, so design a connecting rod for an ic engine so running at so the speed so running at means it is a speed so speed is denoted by capital so that is 1800 rpm speed 1800 rpm and developing a maximum pressure so maximum pressure is denoted by capital p so it is a 3.15 newton per mm square so the diameter of piston so that is denoted by capital d 100 mm and mass of for reciprocating parts so denoted by the m sub suffix r so that is a 2.25 kg so it is a mass of reciprocating parts per cylinder so for each cylinder we are having the so 2.5 kg of reciprocating parts which means the piston piston rings and the piston pin so those all uh, get into the net weight of 2.25 kg that is mass of reciprocating parts and length of uh, connecting rod that is given that is a uh, uh, we denote uh, here the length of connecting rod as small l so that is the total length of connecting rod we can also denote with capital l so no not a problem there so 380 mm and the stroke length is also given so i can take a small l as 190 mm so after that uh, so take the factor of safety for design now so fos so d6 so on the l by d ratio for big end and small end bearing so l by d ratio for big end so you can do that with the big end now so l by d ratio for big end it is 1.3 so for small end for the small end is 2 so on the corresponding bearing pressures is also given so So bearing pressure so can be known as PVC. So big bearing that is the main bearing. Uh, so that is the crank pin. So I can denote with PVC. So PVC is uh, one point. Uh, sorry. So PVC is a ten newton per mm square. And the bearing pressure at piston pin. So that is a fifteen newton per mm square. So after that, the density of material is also given. The connecting rod, the material density that is denoted by rho, so 800 sorry 8000 kg per meter cube. So after that, so on the allowable stresses for bolts, so I can write here allowable stresses for bolts sigma T B. So sigma T B is given as 60 newton per mm square. As well as for bending stress per cap, so 18 newton per mm square. And the section is I section, and they are allowable. Uh, that is a numerator constant is sigma c, so that is a 3.15 newton per mm square. And denominator constant is a small a, so 1 by 7.5. So the section is also given. That is a I section. So the The proportions for the section uh, we can take as per our uh, based upon uh, our uh, proportionate values. We can take as per our convenience. We can take our proportions for the section. But whenever we take in uh, proportions, that we need to check for with the buckling of uh, connecting rod about I X X and I Y Y. So that is uh, should be in between the ratio of I X X and I Y Y should be kept in between the three to three point five times. That we need to check. So as per that, uh, so that we are already checked in the design procedure. So we are taking the proportions of our flange and uh, uh, that is a uh, for here we are taking the thickness t and the height h uh, can be taken as five times and width is taken as four times that we are already checked with the ratio of uh, I X X and I Y Y that is given as a three point two so which is very much satisfactory the same proportions are going to take uh, for the design of cross section of connecting rod here also clear so let us uh, go into the let us uh, do the design now uh, so how the how the design is going to perform for that. Uh, Uh, they are finding out the dimensions. So this is the given data. So let us uh, go into the design of connecting rod. So for the connecting rod design, uh, so first first step in the design, we need to calculate uh, what is the dimensions.
or cross section of connecting wall. So here uh, I am taking the cross section. So let us uh, take an I section for connecting rod. With the proportions of uh, thickness of flanges, top and bottom flanges denoted by T, and thickness of web is also denoted by T, and the width of the cross section I am taking uh, as a four times of T, and the height denoted by H, and it is taken five times of thickness of uh, flange. Order. So this is the proportions I am going to take for calculating the cross sections for. Uh, of connecting rod. So, as per as per these proportions, we are already uh, calculated the i x x and i y y values for this. The ratio of i x x and i y y is going to be given as 3.2. So, this uh, satisfies the uh, statement that is what uh, the buckling is going to uh, that is a buckling strength in the about x axis and y axis are same. So that uh, so these what are the proportions we are consider the top shape. So let us go into the calculate design how these uh, dimensions are going to be calculated for cross section. So first of all, uh, so we can uh, calculate the dimensions of connecting rod by considering so cons considering it as a strut. Subject to Compressive forces and dimensions calculated using Rankine's equation or Rankine's formula. So the Rankine's formula is given by buckling load. Sigma C into capital A by and plus small a into L by whole square. So here, so this is the Rankine equation. So we need to calculate the dimensions using the Rankine's equation, and the buckling is going to consider the about i axis. So that we can take the radius of direction here about the x axis. So here the sigma C, so that is given in data. So it is a sigma C value. It is a numeric, uh, numerator constant and denominator constant small a is also given. So that is 1 by 7500. And capital A, that is a cross section area for this section, whatever the proportions we are considering. Here. So for this cross section, if you can calculate as in three rectangles, it is. So this is a first rectangle and second rectangle, and this is a third rectangle. And I can calculate the sum of these three rectangles. Uh, you may get the cross section area for this uh, uh, considered cross section, you will get 11 p square. You can simply calculate it. And as well as I can also need to calculate the radius of gyration kxx. So it is given from the relation ixx equal to ak square from that uh, ak equal to so ixx by a. So you can substitute uh, the value of ixx that is 419 by 12 p power 4 and a is 11 p square. You may get the kxx value as 1.783. Uh, so that uh, so area you can substitute in terms of uh, t that is a thickness of web and a small uh, kxx the radius of variation kxx in terms of t so you can substitute these values sigma c is known small a is known and capital f that is also given in data that is the effective length of uh, connecting rod 380 so you can substitute all these values but what about the buckling load here so load know the buckling load so first of all you can also need to calculate the buckling load so here the buckling load uh, WB is also calculated by buckling load is given by maximum gas load into FX that is factor also. So we know that what is the maximum gas load. So we already know that to calculate the maximum gas load pi by 4 d square into capital B. So diameter of uh, bore is given. So that is 100 mm. And maximum gas pressure is also given 3.15 Newton per mm square. So you can substitute both the values here. And factor of safety you can take 5 to 6 in general. But in the 
data they mentioned clearly the factor of safety as 6 so you can take the factor of safety of OS as 6 you can substitute all the values here so you can calculate the buckling load so I calculated the value of the buckling load it may be given 148440 newtons so this is the buckling load by substituting all the values of diameter 100 mm and the pressure 3.15 newton per mm square so the FOS are taken as 6 so I may get the buckling load WG as 148440 newtons Clear? So by substituting the value of so WB in this equation, so sigma C is given and the capital A that is a cross section is 11T square and the small a is also given denominator constant 1 by 7500 and KHX as 1.780 and the capital L is the uh, effective length of connecting rod 381. You can substitute all the values in this equation, you may get the thickness, you may get the thickness of web or cross section so it may be around uh, so I may get 3.8 mm so I can take this as a 7 mm thickness of web so here this is the thickness so thickness of uh, web as well as the flames so after finding out the thickness so we can calculate the uh, height of uh, cross section that is x equal to 5 width of cross section capital B equal to 4 times of so after finding out the height and uh, width of uh, cross sections so you can also calculate uh, so this 35 mm and this 28 mm so you need to calculate so the cross section the width of cross section is uniform throughout the length of connecting rod but the height so height of the cross section is going to vary uh, from uh, big end of uh, connecting rod to the small end that is from uh, greater uh, height you may have at the crank pin and a smaller height at the uh, piston pin so the height may be varies so you can calculate the height uh, near piston pin so that is smaller height so I am not mentioning H1 or H2 why because you can take H1 or H2 based upon your proportions so as per your convenience, so I can simply mention it as a uh, height near the piston pin. So that is a smaller uh, height. So uh, this may be ranging from 0 0.75 h to 0 0.9 times of h. And thus uh, you can calculate uh, taking in between. So I can take 0 0.85 h so that I may get 30 mm. Next height, height of connecting rod near ranking so it is uh, given by 1.1 h2 1.25 h so here i can take uh, 1.2 times of h so that the height here the ranking is given by 42 m so i am taking uh, so 1.2 h so on the height near the piston pin is 0 0.85 h so 30 mm and 42 m so this is the values uh, need to calculate this is the uh, dimensions of cross section of connecting rod so initially the thickness so t and then height 35 mm and the width is 28 mm and height near the small end and height near the big end. So that gives the total dimensions near that is the cross section details of the connecting rod. So after finding out all the values you can go with uh, uh, the next step in the design that is the dimensions of crank pin and piston pin. Crank pin. And piston pin. So here are the dimensions of crank pin and piston pin. So let us uh, take uh, the diameter of crank pin is denoted by DC and the length is denoted by LC and the dimensions of piston pin that is the DP and the length of piston pin is LP. So these are the dimensions uh, we have to calculate in the step number 2 that is the dimensions of crank pin and piston pin. So here are the dimensions of crank pin and piston pin uh, are calculated the uh, uh, by taking the maximum load acting on the connecting rod that is the maximum load F max uh, so as I stated in the uh, forces acting on connecting rod the maximum force acting on the connecting rod is given by the sum of uh, gas load plus inertia force but here uh, in the dimensions of crank pin and uh, piston pin in the design of crank pin and piston pin so we are going to neglect the inertia forces acting on the 
piston that is the connecting rod so that the maximum force acting on the connecting rod is taken equal to the maximum gas load so we have already calculated the maximum gas load in the earlier step so we can take uh, the maximum gas load uh, is equal to the maximum load acting on the connecting rod you are simply neglecting the value of uh, inertia forces due to reciprocating parts while calculating the or while uh, determining the dimensions for connecting rod piston clear so that the, the maximum gas maximum load acting on the the connecting rod is given by the maximum gas load that is pi by 4 d square into p so that we are already we are calculated in earlier step so no need to calculate here you can simply uh, replace the value with the maximum gas load of fg here okay so under these dimensions are going to calculate by equating these maximum force acting on the connecting rod uh, to the bearing loads acting on the corresponding pins that is either if you are, if you are calculating the crank pin you can simply take the bearing load acting at the crank pin if you are going to calculate the piston pin dimensions, uh, so then you can consider the bearing load acting at the piston pin. Clear? So here we can take uh, this, uh, this is the equation 1. So that is the maximum load acting on the connecting rod is taken equal to the maximum gas load. We are simply neglecting the energy of force equal to reciprocating parts. So that is going to equate it to the uh, maximum uh, that is a uh, bearing load acting on. Cranking. So we know that uh, the bearing load can be written as bearing pressure into bearing area. So bearing pressure here I can denote it with uh, PB is a bearing pressure, but here I am taking at the con at the particular crank pin. So I am denoting with PBC suffix C. So and the bearing area is given by so L into D. So LC into DC. So it is uh, the equation clear. So by equating by equating the equation 1 and 2, so that is, uh, so by equating the maximum load acting on the connecting rod, so that is equal to maximum gas load is equal to the load, that is a bearing load acting on the crank pin, so that uh, so the dimensions of uh, crank pin is going to calculate, so pi by 4 d square that is equation 1 and the equation 2 is the bearing load acting on the crank pin, so d is equal to LC. So by equating these two terms, so capital D is known, so that is a cylinder board. So P is known so that we calculated the total value of maximum gas load. So and the PBC is a given in the data here. So that is 10 Newton per mm square. And DC is the diameter of cranking that we are going to calculate. And the L, L that is LC. So here L body ratio for big end pin is given. So that is the LC can be written as 1.3 times of DC. L body ratio is given. So LC in terms of DC we can substitute. So from that we can calculate the the diameter of uh, crank pin uh, so you can substitute all the values of the dc it may be given now so around 46 sorry 44 m clear so similarly so that is the dimensions for uh, so you can also calculate the length of uh, crank pin so this uh, 1.3 times of uh, dc so is uh, 58 m so similarly you can also calculate uh, the dimensions of uh, Similarly, so bearing load acting on piston pin. So it is given by so bearing pressure PBP into bearing area LP into BP. So here again I equate uh, these equations of uh, 1 and 3. So equating equations 1 and 3, we can calculate uh, the diameter of piston pin. So here the bearing pressure at piston pin is given, that is 15 Newton per mm square. And the L by D ratio for piston pin is also given, that is 2. So LP LD can be written in terms of diameter, that is a 2 dp. So we can substitute the values of all the values. So the diameter of piston pin uh, is given 28.9 something. So we can route up to 30 mm. And the length of uh, pin is uh, equal to 60 mm. So that is twice so the given L by ratio. So length of pin is given by 60 mm. Okay. So this is uh, the dimensions of crank pin and piston pin. So by equating the maximum load acting on connecting rod. So generally the load maximum load acting is given uh, gas load plus energy of forces. But we are neglecting the energy of forces with reciprocating rod. We are taking only the maximum gas load acting on connecting rod as a maximum load acting on connecting rod. That we are going to equate it to the bearing loads of corresponding pins that we are either cranking by or piston pin.
So you can calculate the dimensions DCLs and DPI delta. And the step number three. So that is uh, you need to calculate the size of bolts or the dimensions of bolts. So for that uh, you need to calculate. Uh, let us consider the so DCB. So where the DCB means the core diameter of bolts. So you need to calculate. So here the bolts. So for uh, fixing at the begin the of connecting rod, the cap is going to assemble by means of uh, bolts. So in general, uh, we can use the two number of bolts to hold the cap uh, to the body. So we can take the number of bolts as two. So here the bolts are subjected to the tensile forces. So on these tensile forces uh, is going to uh, act. That is uh, going to act due to the inertia force. That is uh, supposed to act uh, to the inertia force of uh, reciprocating parts. That is a maximum inertia force. So we know that the inertia force is given by so F I equal to so M R omega square R into cos theta plus cos two theta by L by R. So this is the inertia force uh, acting on the connecting rod. But here uh, the dimensions of uh, bolts is going to be calculated by equating the tensile strength of bolts to the maximum inertia force acting on the connecting rod. So this is not the maximum inertia force. This is the General inertia force acting on the connecting rod, but the maximum inertia force acts when the piston at the top dead center, so that when the crank angle, that is the crank angle of theta is equal to zero. So for calculating the maximum inertia force, that is the maximum inertia force, so theta is going to be zero. So that F I is given by. M R omega square R into one plus R by y. So this is the inertia force. That is the maximum inertia force acting on connecting rod. So by equating the the maximum inertia force acting on connecting rod to the tensile strength of all bolts, and the tensile strength of bolts, we are going to calculate the diameter of bolt. So let us see. So we can write the statement here. So the the size of Size of bolts. Uh, Determine by equating so maximum inertia force, and we can also write the inertia force when the piston is top dead center. So that gives the maximum inertia force. Inertia force, maximum inertia force to the. Tensile strength of bolts. So maximum inertia force that we are already written here. So the tensile strength of bolts is given by so area into tensile strength is a cross section area of bolts pi by four d c d square into sigma d v. So this is the tensile strength of one bolt, but uh, we need to take uh, the total number of bolts. So we can multiply it by n of n into v. So this is v. So that is number of bolts. As I stated that, uh, so so usually you can use the uh, two number of bolts uh, to assemble. So N B is taken as uh, two. So sigma T B. So that is a permissible tensile strength of bolt material that is given in data. Sigma T B 16 newton per meter square. And uh, D C B is the core diameter that you need to calculate. So by equating the maximum inertia force uh, to the tensile strength of all bolts, so you can take the number of bolts as two. So and sigma T B is given. So that is uh, 16 newton per meter square. So that you can calculate the uh, DCB, so core diameter. So you can substitute all the values. You may get the 10.08. Yeah. So after finding out core diameter, you can also calculate the nominal diameter of bolts. Nominal diameter of bolts. So that is a DB is equal to DC by 0.84. You can substitute the values. You may get the around. So the number of uh, diameter of bolts. Okay. Yeah. So after finding out the, uh, there is a step number three, finding out the dimensions of the diameter of bolts. So that is equating maximum inertia force to the tensile strength of bolts. So under uh, the next step, uh, so then we need to calculate the thickness of cap. So let us see. So, so after finding out uh, the dimensions of uh, bolts, so the last step is the design. So that is we need to calculate the. Uh, So determine the thickness of cap. The thickness of cap here denoted with T C 
e sub x c so this is the thickness of tab we need to calculate so here all of the assumption we can take uh, that is a tab so it is the assumed as simply supported beam so the supported at the center of bolts so it here we are considering it as a simply supported beam and supported at the center of bolts and it is loaded by maximum inertia force that is fi we are calculated that in the previous step so fi that is when it is a maximum so when it is a piston at the top bit center maximum inertia force you can take so, so maximum inertia force so for the this assume the magnitude of load of force is in between so in between u here that is the uniform distributed load and concentrated load so here what is the assumption now we are taking is that so the total cap is going to taken as a simple supported beam supported at the center of bolts and it is loaded by maximum inertia force and the magnitude of the force so what are the maximum inertia force is there but the total maximum inertia force uh, the magnitude is not completely linear and not completely simply there is a uh, concentrated so it can take uh, in between the magnitude so the dimensions uh, is going to calculate the dimension of cap is determined by bending action so that is maximum bending moment acting on cap that is a in the uh, bending moment m the bending moment in the cap is calculated by m equal to so you can take the uh, fi that is a load acting on the uh, cap so that is inertia force fi into here uh, you can take the supports in between the length of the cap is taken in between the support that is from center of the bolt to the another center i can denote with the l dash so by 6 so f into l dash by 6 so here fi that is the inertia force you are calculated in the previous step but l dash is the distance between the center of bolts that you can calculate that so l dash is given by diameter of crank beam is denoted by dc so plus uh, 2 into thickness of liner thickness of liner plus 2 into clearance so this gives the total distance between the center of bolts l dash so i can substitute dc we are already calculated in the earlier step so dc is given by 44 uh, uh, mm and to the thickness of liner or the thickness of liner is taken uh, as 3 mm so 3 mm uh, liner thickness and the clearance is also taken uh, 2 to 3 mm so that uh, l dash is uh, so after substituting all the values l dash is uh, given by so this is, so 65 mm. that is a distance between the two center of bolts so by substituting the value of uh, f dash and l dash uh, so, so we may get the max bending moment in the beam so so that is f that is the m moment so you can substitute the values of l dash and the f dash and the section modulus so the section modulus of cap so cap that is we have taken it is in a rectangular plate so z is given by dc into pc square by 6 so here the width of the cap is taken equal to the length so bc equal to lc 
So LC length of uh, crank pin we are calculated that is uh, 58 mm. So you can substitute the values of uh, BC is equal to LC and the L dash is 65 mm and the FI is more. So and uh, so by using the bending stress, so sigma B equal to M by Z. So that is uh, FI into L dash by BC into TC square. So so sigma B that is a permissible bending stress for cap meter. So this is given, sigma b is given, permissible bending stress in the given data, 18 moton per m square. You can substitute the value of sigma b in this equation and the fi is more and the l dash is also the calculated here. And uh, so bc is taken equal to the lc that is a 58 mm. So from that you can calculate the thickness of cap. So tc, uh, you can substitute all the values in the thickness of cap. Uh, so that is given uh, around uh, 12 mm. So you can calculate it, so, so maybe around uh, between that value, so after finding out uh, substituting all the values you may get the thickness. So this is up to this extent you can calculate all the dimensions of uh, that is a design we have performed. So whatever the design we have given for the connecting rod for the given specifications, we can also need to check for the uh, induced that is the inertia bending stress that is a whipping stress. So let us see how the uh, design is going to check for the uh, given uh, specifications. So that is uh, checking for, we need to check for individual stress, we need to check. Uh, so check our design, so whatever the designs we are providing. So that designs we need to check for inertia bending stress. Inertia bending stress and this stress we can also call it as a whipping stress. So I am already explained uh, during the forces acting on the connecting rod, so that is the second force, force due to the inertia of connecting rod uh, due to its own weight, that is a self weight, so it may be uh, resolved into two components uh, when it is acting along the plane of rotation, so it may be equal to the maximum gas load when it is perpendicular to the plane of rotation, so it causes the bending of the connecting rod due to its self weight, so that the stress induces due to that inertia bending force bending stress required as a whipping stress clear so we can, here we can calculate the maximum bending stress induced due to the inertia force of self weight of connecting rod so here for that i need to calculate the maximum bending movement acting on maximum bending movement acting on the connecting rod so that is m max is given by so m1 omega square r into l square by 9 root 3 so here uh, M1, so so not it is not an MR, so MR is a mass of reciprocating parts, but here this M1 means that is a mass of the connecting rod. So that you are going to calculate first. So omega is a uh, angular, uh, that is an angular speed of engine 2 pi n by 60 that we are calculated using the inertia force, FI. So R is the stroke length, that is our radius of crank and L is the stroke length. So first of all you can calculate the mass uh, of connecting rod. So here the mass can be calculated. Uh, volume into length, so for unit length we are taking, so volume into length, so volume can be written as area into L into density, so area is 11 T square, so that you know that 11 T square in terms of T, you know that area, and the length of connecting rod is given, so 28 mm, and the rho is the density of material that is also given there, so using that first of all you can calculate, so, so it is a 380, 8000 so you can calculate the mass first so after finding out the mass you can substitute the mass in the ro equation so that is for maximum bending moment of connecting rod so and the uh, omega we are already calculated in the earlier step so r is the uh, radius and l is the stroke length so you can calculate the maximum bending moment acting on the connecting rod so that is given by so 51 so you can substitute the values so you may get around 51300 newton m so this is the value of the maximum bending moment. So after calculating the maximum bending moment, you can also calculate the section modulus. Section modulus about the uh, x-axis. You can consider about x-axis. Why? Because the design is performed about the buckling of connecting rod about x-axis. So you can also need to calculate the section modulus about x-axis. So that is zxx uh, can take. Uh, so it is given by 5xx by by t by 2. So we know that the moment of inertia about i x x 419 by 12 t power 4 and uh, and uh, phi t by 2 sorry so we know that z x x is given by i x x by 
30 by 2 axis we know that and the 30 by 2 can substitute we may get the z axis value uh, around that uh, may be so 4, 7, 9, 2 and then q so from that I can calculate the induced bending stress induced bending stress that is the maximum bending stress induced in the connecting or sigma v max equal to maximum bending moment acting due to the self weight acting on the connecting rod m max that is uh, here that is 51300 and the section modulus about x axis z axis so you can substitute both the values you may get that 10.8 newton per mm square so this is the induced value so maximum induced bending stress so here for the safer designs uh, for whatever the designs you are providing if the design is a safe, so that is stating that, uh, so by knowing the calculated the induced bending stress, that should be less than the given permissible value. So here 10.8 Newton per mm square is a calculated induced stress. So this is uh, to be compared with the given allowable permissible bending stress. So here it is the value of uh, allowable bending stress that is 18 Newton per mm square. So here our value that is induced bending stress is less than the given permissible value that the whatever the design we have done is going to be safe that is the connecting rod is going to withstand the maximum gas load that is the maximum force acting on the connecting rod maximum gas load along with the inertia force of due to the reciprocating parts along with the inertia force due to the self weight of the connecting rod clear so this is how the design of connecting rod is going to perform in the next class we can uh, discuss uh, further the design of connecting rod with the other example clear thank you